Bonjour à tous. Euh, je vais faire ma présentation euh, euh, en anglais puis en français. Euh, la plupart des, euh, euh, des images aussi parlent beaucoup, donc euh, je vais commencer par l'anglais. Hi everybody, I will uh, speak um, first in English and uh, sometimes in French, so both, um, uh, but both languages can um, be understood and uh, the slides are also written in English. So, <coughs> my presentation uh, is entitled um, Exploring the Production of International Exhibitions as a Lever for Artists by presenting Molière. So, Molière is an international exhibition producer in media arts. It was, uh, pro it was founded by uh, André Duchesne uh, here um, in 2001. So we are celebrating the um, 15th anniversary. Uh, we are based in Montreal and uh, we co-produce large scale exhibitions with foreign museums, uh, cultural institutions uh, or venues. And uh, we aim to offer optimal conditions for artists. Um, Molière has been developed as a unique uh, model uh, in Canada. Uh, because we work um, as a film producer in the sense that uh, we don't work with a filmmaker but uh, with a curator and then we produce the uh, exhibitions. Uh, we also have an artistic director as in a theater and uh, then we need a venue uh, like a museum, cultural institution uh, as a partner to, uh, to, to exhibit um, the, our projects. And we also circulate exhibitions uh, as uh, museums do so. So um, Molière is an exhibition producer, so in media art, as I said, and um, um, we produced 52 projects, including uh, 139 artists in Canada, China, Brazil, Peru, France, and Portugal. We collaborated with uh, 11 curators, so both uh, from Canada as well as international ones. Um, it's also really int important uh, for us um, to uh, produce uh, or co-produce publications. So uh, we, we, we worked on 11 catalogs. And uh, we had in total uh, 20 uh, national and international partners such as museums, venues, galleries, art centers. Here I will, um, I made a, a short uh, selection from our past activities to give you an overview. Uh, maybe, in, well, in 2001 that was founded uh, by uh, André Duchesne. Um, first, the first years of projects um, uh, were mostly in uh, in Montreal or in Canada. Uh, we collaborated um, a lot with uh, Oboro, but um, Claudine will present afterwards. Um, but as you can see, um, a lot of projects uh, have been done uh, abroad. So in 2009, uh, Molière collaborated with um, a Festival File in Sao Paulo um, by presenting Constanza Silva and Martin Le Duc. Uh, in the same year, um, Molière uh, collaborated with the Festival International de Video Arte Electronico at uh, Lima uh, with projects from Bill Vaughan and Costanza um, Silva. 2006, um, there it was an exhibition that was um, uh, presented in uh, Beijing with uh, A.E. Alexandre Castonguet, B. Wu, Brad Todd, Jean Dubois, Lynn Hughes, and uh, Simon Laroche. And uh, Magnitude and Saisissement in Montreal, so there were still projects going on also uh, here at that time uh, with Clara Bonds and Francois Quevillon. 
in 2008 uh, exhi the exhibition inside that was uh, previously presented as i mentioned in Be in beijing was then um, s circulated then uh, to sao paulo we saw the same artist then uh, another project in uh, in china so synthetic times uh, media art china at the national art museum of china with uh, david rockaby luc courchen rafael lutz neumer sorry <coughs> sorry i have a flu and then in 2009 um, another project uh, this time in uh, shanghai at the shanghai international gallery an exhibition of media art uh, with jean dubois and luc courchen then in 2011, uh, TransLife International Triennial of New Media Arts. So actually, the, um, the project in 2008 um, became a, a, a triennial, and then uh, Molière has been a um, collaborator in each, um, uh, each year. So uh, and then 2012, uh, again with a file festival with Jean-Pierre Gauthier, Nicolas Reeves, David Saint-Onge, and Lingao. I will then present the projects that followed um, more, more in details afterwards. <coughs> so, um, what I found interesting in the frame of that presentation, of that um, colloquium was uh, to um, also explain that uh, since its beginning, Molière uh, hasn't been only in the main networks of digital arts, so um, even so from 2001. So I have here three examples. Uh, the first one uh, were the projects with um, sciences centers, where, uh, where some, uh, where, the, um, where Molière co-produced um, artworks. So we have here, for example, in 2009, um, a public art project, but that was um, not a long-term one, but uh, from Melissa Mangia that we saw earlier uh, this morning, today, Fanfare, an interactive piece. Uh, in 2005, uh, there was a project uh, from Bill Vaughan, Rotroscopic, that was also co-produced, um, so in Montreal. And uh, Fanfare was then uh, presented in 2011 um, in a um, science center, but in Ottawa then. Another type of project, um, which is also, uh, that, was not uh, that was also not in the main um, networks of digital art initially, um, were projects with uh, SESC in Sao Paulo in Brazil. So um, to give, uh, maybe um, most of you maybe don't know uh, how the SESC uh, uh, look like. And it's, um, it's really like huge cultural centers. It's really a unique model uh, in the world. So um, there are 33 units uh, of SESC in Sao Paulo. And uh, there are really these huge uh, buildings that are really uh, visible in an area of the city and that are really integrated uh, in, the, in that area. Um, and um, well, first they really offer good exhibition conditions like in national museums or, um, and um, the thing is that they have um, really a social um, uh, way to, uh, to organize up their projects in the sense that um, so each unit, for example, has a library, uh, has a theater venue, an exhibition space, but they also have like sport facilities, they organize workshops. They also have restaurants where they serve like really cheap, healthy food. Um, they, they have open public spaces, so the, their architecture is also uh, really well um, done, so that um, uh, that's really uh, places for people to meet and uh, exchange. So um, what is really interesting is that uh, there are so many people going there every day. Um, it's like you will meet uh, grandparents going with their child, uh, 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 grandchild, grandchildren um, for to go to, to swim and then they will uh, end uh, uh, visiting an exhibition. So you really, um, you really meet um, the 
people that are not especially sometimes going to museum and uh, so let's see so <coughs> we had um, here I present the second project we had with them uh, so a live the project Evey that was presented uh, in March uh, till June 2014 so in Sesc uh, Santana The curator <coughs> is uh, Sylvie Parent here. So maybe I will just change to French a bit. Donc, um, uh, l'exposition uh, présentée uh, des projets robotiques et cinétiques qui utilisent uh, donc le mouvement pour exprimer l'essence du uh, vivant. Euh, sont des projets en fait qui euh, n'étaient pas basés sur un mimétisme euh, de la forme humaine, mais euh, qui par le mouvement euh, suggéraient euh, un comportement euh, biologique humain. Donc là, je vais montrer une première euh, œuvre, Chico McMurtry. Uh, nous avons coproduit uh, cette œuvre, Organic Arches. So it's a site specific um, production. Donc, uh, comme vous le voyez, uh, c'est une œuvre uh, um, robotique qui, uh, qui permet en fait de, de gonfler uh, les modules qu'on voit ici. Et uh, d d avec un mouvement qui est très organique uh, et qui vont finalement. Uh, prendre tout l'espace, donc euh, il y a vraiment un changement au niveau de l'architecture euh, du lieu par l'œuvre. On peut euh, aussi euh, vraiment passer à travers l'œuvre. Et euh, c'est vrai que dans, dans son aspect aussi à l'extérieur, on a un peu l'impression que ça représente un squelette euh, de baleine ou quelque chose comme ça. Et quand on prend vraiment le temps d'observer euh, le mouvement, donc quand le, les, les modules se gonflent ou se dégonflent, il y a vraiment un mouvement qui est euh, assez déroutant parce qu'on a l'impression de, 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 que c'est un, un élément euh, organique qui est en train de, de se déplacer. Je laisse un peu la vidéo pour vous donner l'impression. Ensuite, donc, dans l'exposition, euh, nous avions une œuvre de Jane Tingley, Peripheral Response, de 2006. Donc là, il s'agit d'une installation interactive euh, où les éléments que vous voyez sont placés en fait, sur les murs et sur le sol. Euh, et en fait, les, toutes les petits, les petits doigts qu'on voit, en fait, finalement, sont euh, mobiles et vont taper euh, au sol. Euh, tel un, un système euh, neurologique ou euh, euh, donc c'est ça ici une œuvre d'Ingrid Bachmann Pelt Bestiary de 2012 euh, donc là en fait euh, ça ressemble à des pots de bêtes euh, quand on s'approche en fait on les voit soit euh, respirer on a l'impression qu'elles respirent donc comme si la peau se soulevait et se rabaissait euh, ou euh, comme si elle, euh, they were shaking, comme si elle était en train de trembler. Euh, il y en a même une d'entre elles qui n'a aucun moteur ou aucun élément euh, euh, mécanique, donc finalement elle reste figée. Euh, mais euh, parfois le public pense l'avoir euh, bougée malgré tout. C'est assez drôle. Ben, euh, donc ensuite une œuvre de Steve Daniels, c'est ça, Cécile, de 2008-2011. Donc en fait, chaque module que vous voyez placé euh, <coughs> au mur euh, détecte euh, les... Um, so each model can detect the shadows from people. So when you move or when you get close to the artwork, the artwork will react. But um, it will also, uh, it also has um, a behavior that um, it learns through the whole exhibition. So each model will get its own uh, behavior. Um, 
So, and then when they react, they really look like animal that would be um, stuck and that has no way to escape. So, uh, that has just a way to protect itself by hiding. So, the way they move also is really uh, organic, like people project that it could be an animal. Then the work from uh, Jean-Pierre Gauthier, Hypoxia, 3 et 4, de 2011. Uh, qui est une œuvre sonore uh, uh, qu'on n'entendra malheureusement pas ici, mais um, comme vous voyez, en fait, uh, le son uh, est produit uh, mécaniquement uh, au niveau de la, par la matière même uh, des éléments qui la composent um, et uh, qui crée comme un écosystème uh, tel uh, un écosystème avec uh, des un étang avec des grenouilles ou ce genre de choses. Donc on a uh, l'impression d'entendre des oiseaux, ou quelque, comme une, four une jungle tropicale ou quelque chose comme ça. Et c'est vraiment intéressant, passionnant de juste rester à regarder les petits modules qui, euh, qui évoluent et qui fin finalement euh, créent même le, le, la sonori sonorité. Paola Gaetano a dit, euh, Anima de 2009. Euh, donc là, on voit une forme avec un orifice qu'on voit ici. Euh, donc on, croit, on a vraiment l'impression de voir une sorte de peau... Euh, humaine et euh, l'œuvre en fait euh, donne l'impression aussi de respirer, de bouger. On a même l'impression qu'elle transpire, donc euh, c'est assez déroutant aussi. Euh, dans le cadre de cette exposition, euh, il y a eu un catalogue qui a été produit en portugais, euh, anglais et français. So here you can see the whole team from the exhibition. So that was a three months exhibition, which is somehow quite long for a digital art uh, exhibition. We had uh, 17,000 visitors. That was the sixth collaboration of Molior in Brazil. And um, now we are working on the circulation of the exhibition live in Asia, in the USA. And, um, yeah. and then um, we, what also we find really interesting is that um, Uh, and we, we like that our partners uh, have this, the same way to think about it, is really to open the exhibitions to uh, a large public. So uh, here you can see the team of uh, exhibition guides, and uh, there were more than 400 pupils that visited uh, the exhibition. Okay. Then another example, um, is uh, the um, International Trainer of, of New Media Art. Well, this is uh, definitely um, a project uh, really uh, specialized in uh, media arts, of course. But what I found interesting is that <coughs> it was um, uh, presented the uh, first time in 2008 and um, in a National Art Museum of China. Uh, so, like, it also shows how the, that museum was open to Uh, that uh, form of art. So that was in uh, June and July um, 2014. Um, so yeah, that was the third international trainer of new media arts. There were 65 artists in total. Uh, so our participation was to represent five artists from Quebec. Um, so on 58 artworks, four, four from were from Quebec. 22 countries were represented, and the other institutional partners were V201, Transmedial, MAP, Curator, Jenga, with a theme, Thing World. I will show just a little extract. Um, Catherine Béchard and Samba Hudon that, that were uh, presented. Look, this project was produced in Oboro.
so the catalog was also produced in English and uh, Mandarin. Uh, half of the catalog was um, with a uh, theoretical text from uh, different uh, authors. And uh, also there was a huge media coverage, more than 350 disseminations, and more than 100,000 visitors in this one month exhibition. Um, also, to, to, to sp I was thinking about the, the subject of, uh, of, a color of that panel, so I just made like a list of um, what are some of our main objectives as a leverage for um, artists. Um, for Molière, it's really important to um, produce exhibitions with uh, strong concepts, uh, articulated themes, uh, so curated shows. Um, it's also important to um, present both emerging artists with established ones because that really uh, brings them uh, a strong uh, and important experience. Um, also to, um, to present with the Canadian artists uh, in international exhibitions, meaning that uh, they are not only Canadian artists together abroad, but that they are really, uh, that for them it's really um, more interesting to uh, be uh, in an international show. Uh, sometimes to produce uh, artworks, like site specific, and also to present uh, all the older works in the sense that a um, lot of works are, uh, when they are just produced, they circulate a lot, but then, but they can still have a life, and, some, and the most important is, the, is also the concept of exhibition, not if it has just produced recently for us. And the importance in the elabor elaboration of partnerships we develop, so we do that in order to open a new market for Canadian artists in a foreign country. Um, but it's also important to establish a long-term partnership in that same country in the sense that it's not only to do a one-time show and then, you know, what's going on afterwards, but then how do you establish long-term partnerships that you would do more complex projects and really develop something that will be benefit for uh, the artists on the long term. Oops, sorry, it's not yet finished. Um, yeah, having the potential to reach a large network. So that, yeah. So I think it's, it says what it what it means. Um, to really br go, uh, bring good conditions for artists. So to have a good uh, management of project, a good technical um, support, uh, offer good um, uh, fees, uh, and really open an, an international network to the artist. Um, that they also can really get a rewarding experience in doing so. Um, to really also uh, analyze what type of implication from the partner we have. Reaching also a big audience because it's a lot of energy and money and you know that you really do that show so lots of people can benefit from it. Well, then also to get like large media coverage and really look at the quality of a partnership by itself. So that's it, thank you very much.